if we're going to produce God's glory, we must win. Uh, yes. Just, just uh, having a good proclamation or a good statement or uh, a fish on the back of your car is just not good enough. Amen. The size of your Bible on the top of the mantle is not good enough. Amen. You've got to have manifestation. Where there is no manifestation, there is no proof that our God is real. So you must be on a personal mission to obey God, submit to God, that God can get glory in the earth through oh, yes. you. Amen. You understand that? Amen. God said whatever he's doing in your life, he's not doing it to hide it. He will not light a candle and put it under a bed. He lights it that it may bring light to the room. What God wants to do in your life, he's hoping to help someone else to see that he's God. Amen. You understand that? Amen. Now, we were talking about a few things uh, on our Bible study uh, in regards to prayer. And a lot of people <coughs> invest too much time praying for God not to have the harvest to manifest in their life from the seeds that they've sown. Mm -hmm. Bad decisions will produce a harvest you don't want to live with. Amen. Amen. Or you can say amen. amen. That's right. amen. Bad decisions amen. will always produce a harvest you don't want to live with. Amen. And you cannot ask God to remove the harvest, but you're not asking God to remove the heart Woo. that produced the harvest. Right. Listen to me. Come on. So if I'm going to have a harvest in my life um, that, I, that I don't want, I need to not just ask God to get rid of the harvest. I need to ask God to get rid of the heart that produced it. And then I can grow in God. Because just doing what I want and asking God to clean it up is not going to cause me to grow. You understand that? Uh, and, and, and you don't want to be uh, the type of child that others will consider, you know, the, the Happy Meal. That the, they say the fries is missing from the Happy Meal. The toy ain't there. You understand? Uh, so you, you want to be whole. You want to be complete. So as I'm talking to God and growing to God, I need to make sure my heart is being um, changed, transformed towards glory. Mm -hmm. One thing about my heart is that I cannot prove it to anyone. I know in myself when something is birthed in my heart. Amen. Amen. I can give my testimony, but proof is only I know. And this is what's wonderful about where you're at right now with God. Nobody knows the nature of your heart like you do. That's mm -hmm. Come on. You understand that? Come on, man. And whether or not you came here because you love God or you came because I want a car, a house, I'm in trouble, I want help. And people will say, well, you know, that's good. You can, you got to, when you're in trouble, you come to church. That's fine. But the chances are, well, it's not the chances. You won't receive the help you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Because the help you need is what God gives, not the help you want. Right. Amen. 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 The help you need is to rid yourself of what got you in this mess mm -hmm. in the first place. Amen. Are you listening? Yes, so until I get rid of that, it don't make sense for me to be talking. Come on. Don't make, it don't make sense to keep praying, God drive me, God drive me, and you're standing in the pool. Mm -hmm. Say, so give me another dry towel. So it ain't working. You got to first come out of the pool. And then we can start working on Amen. the conditions of drying. All right. So without a heart change, there can be no manifestation from God. God don't ask you because you're desperate, because you're crying, because your heart is broken, because you're going through so much you can't take no more, you're suicidal. God, God don't respond to none of that. God only responds to faith. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So in order, in order for you, now the word here is to hear, understand, and do. In order for you to measure what you're expecting from God, it got to be balanced with what you are doing according to what God has said. Okay. And if you're not doing, you ain't getting it. Okay. Well, y'all look like you had something on the line. You had something on the line. Right? So let's get into this. We were talking about understanding. Understanding is so powerful. Most people have no idea how powerful understanding is. My mentor, the bishop, he told me, he said, purpose you will only receive from the Lord Jesus on the level of your understanding. So if you don't understand, you can't receive. All right? So now this is what you have to understand. This is what you have to understand. This is so important. Understanding based off what you can control, what you can put into motion in an instant. Not a child in need of parents' help, but to be a lion in the earth, a God in the earth, you have to have understanding to work this thing out in your life. Now, because you love God and you, you know that you, you, you're living for God, 
There's some things you may not understand and you can get manifestation, but you only can get it as a sheep. Okay, you don't, you don't like that. But once I become a lion, I don't need God's help. I act like God and produce it. You, you hearing me? All right? So, and I told you before, sheep, we're sheep when, when God is talking. At the feet of Jesus, we're sheep. When God is speaking, we're sheep. Once I leave his presence, I walk as a lion in the earth. You understand? And God is looking for you to take territory. Well, you can't take territory if you need his assistance in everything. You got to learn how to become like him. Then you'll talk like him and manifestation will flow through you like him. Now that's proven in the Lord's Prayer, St. John chapter number 17. Jesus said, Father, everything I did, I want them to do. Everything you gave me, I want them to have. How they walk the earth, I want them to sanctify them, God, like you sanctified me for your glory. So it is the will of God for you to walk the earth as a lion. Are you listening to me? Yeah. That you'll take territory. Everything the devil has taken. Now, I have, uh, twice I have, uh, uh, um, I've dreamed about my mother. But from a spiritual uh, connection, I've had visitations from my grandmother. My grandmother visited me. We was having church at, in the house, 20 Pensdale Lane. That's where the church, the ministry began. And uh, my grandmother, I was there, I was praying. The pulpit was the dining room area. And uh, I was there and I was praying and my grandmother came in and she gave me something. And it was um, um, a gift of, that was like a prayer, a love for prayer. And she gave it to me and I received it in my bosom. And when she gave it, it was like, like an infilling, like I could, I could feel myself to the point where uh, from that day to this one, my prayer life has never been the same. Has never been the same. Um, and then just over the, the past week, um, I was on the truck and I was praying. I was at a stop and I was praying and I had, um, I, don't, I don't want to call it a vision. Um, I guess you could say uh, an imagination. Um, uh, it was real. And, um, and you know, the Holy Spirit was giving me instructions in regard to racism in the earth and um, how I'm to leave it alone, um, not to comment on it, and, um, and um, injustices. If you read Proverbs, you'll see racism. Proverbs 1.19. You'll see racism. You'll see somebody saying somebody is not treating me fair. Right. Right. And God said, I want you to leave that to me now. Keep your mouth off of it. Um, I just want you to leave that alone. And, um, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, um, my wife's grandmother walks into this vision and she's singing this song. You got to love everybody down here, down here. Down here, you got to love everybody. Down here, you got to go to heaven from down here. And she kept on saying it. And then another part of it said, you got to treat everybody right. Down here, down here, down here, you got to treat everybody right. Down here. You got to go to heaven from down here. Now, while she was singing, angels was behind her. Like she was leading the choir song. And, uh, and what happened was, I began to get revelation of what God was doing concerning racism. You never have to, I never have to open my mouth again concerning, not like opening my mouth really had impact, uh, world impact. But um, giving my opinion, uh, it, 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 bottom line, it, it's something I can't do. And, uh, and, and, and what God is showing me is you never have to be concerned about preachers that are hating people or disliking people because they're different. You understand? You have to never be concerned. Because you got to go to heaven from down here. Amen. Knowledge don't get you in there. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. What you're willing to accept in your heart that's what's going to get you in heaven. You got to believe in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. So once Jesus comes into your heart, things change. Now, here's something that, that, you know, in visitation from my grandmother and my wife's grandmother, this morning I was, uh, I was, I had to, I had to do a route. I was in um, Coatesville, PA, at the post office, and uh, I was headed there, and, I'm, and I was praying, and I was praying, and in my prayer time, and, um, 
And the Holy Spirit said there was something lost from the previous generation, from my mother's generation to my grandmother's generation, the church lost something. Lost something. Lost something significant and powerful that what our grandmothers had, we don't have today. That's true. That's true. That's true. So true. Now, you say what you want. Now, I ain't talking about old songs. I ain't talking about no quartet groups. Mm -hmm. You understand? <clears throat> My grandmother, figured she's living in 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, that era. Education for blacks were on an all time low. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. um, yet, from that time frame, from people that served God, when they did not know how to read to where we at now, we lost something. We lost something. And if you can't decipher what the, the devil is doing to steal what's needed for God to get glory, it'll keep on growing. The devil will keep on winning. Right? Our prayer life means nothing today. Because we don't pray with relationship. Mm -hmm. We pray with a welfare mentality, always begging, mm -hmm. always don't want what we what we rightfully deserve. Right. Want somebody else to pay the ticket that we made. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have a relationship with God. Amen. Yet we know the Greek and the Hebrew. We don't even take trains. We don't drive. We fly where we need to go. Preachers got helicopters, private jets. We got all this stuff. Yet there's something missing. And one of the things, this is something the Holy Spirit gave me this morning as well. You know, I'm going to tell you something. This is one of the reasons why I love my job the way I do. Um, listen to this. This is so powerful. My wife and I were working with this, this one couple. And, um, and, and um, this, this, I was praying for them. And uh, the Holy Spirit gave me this. And this is universal for everything. And he says, listen to this. Never try to fix spiritual problems with a natural tool. You cannot fix a marriage with natural tools or with common sense. You got to find out who's trying to separate you in the marriage. That's where you find marriage is of God. Who would be against anything that's of God? That's where you're fighting. That's right. That's right. You listen to me? And um, sometimes people want to fix things with common sense. But y'all already know common sense ain't common. And uh, what you have to understand is until we get more spiritual, anything you want to do for God is going to require a spiritual fight. That's right. Here, now, here, here's something now. God told me years ago before I really got in, uh, Bishop David Edipo became my mentor like he is now. Um, and, and, and it was so amazing. Years ago, back in when we went to um, Crespo Dollar's ministry, and that was in O2, he, he, uh, it was a, a tape series I bought while I was there. And Bishop Yedipo was teaching faith. And I would hear, I'm telling you, I played that tape out. I still, I, I mean, I really ain't got no tape players now. But the, the, it was something about his teaching that intrigued me. That I would go, you remember we were searching, trying to find him, just couldn't find him like he was just, oh my goodness. But now he, he's in my life. Now, now check this out. When I, when I, Bishop began to, to show me some things and teach me some things about spiritual warfare and building a ministry. Now, now that he's teaching me about ministry, it was years ago the Holy Ghost said you can't go to no more church growth conference. He said, you can't go no more church. You can't go nowhere where they're trying to tell you how to grow the Lord Jesus Church. Well, that, that's not good. That's not good. And then, and then you, know, you know, that's most people don't want the real Holy Ghost. He said, well, how's it going for you now? You're flying all over the place. How's it going for you? And then my mentor said to me, if you're going to build God's house, you're going to have to fight God's enemy. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Come on. Now, now, I'm not knocking any church. And what they doing? That's all I'm talking about temple of deliverance now. And uh, if we're going to grow, 
we got to start with a spiritual fight. Yes, Lord. You got to listen to me. The two things you'll never find me not heavily involved in in this church, that's worship and prayer. I'll never get my hands off those two things. Amen. Amen. I mean, others can lead it. But I, I, you'll never find me not participating in what the prayer is going on in church. I ain't never getting that busy. Because if you're going to do anything for God, it's a spiritual fight. The church has lost the spiritual fight. We want to go to church through singing. That's why some churches are paying a musician more than they're giving the man of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's why the church will, 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 will buy ads and advertisement and, and about who's coming. We try to go to churches through connections. Mm -hmm. This preacher's coming. Mm -hmm. But we don't fight a spiritual fight to grow God's house. Right. And uh, that's what's missing. We don't have that love and that compassion um, like like we once had. Now they say, you know, this is a white man's religion uh, and all the other stuff in certain movements and certain bodies. But they are erecting a church now in Ethiopia that they believe, um, oh my goodness, they called it the first church. And the engravings on the wall, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's, what the deal is now. <clears throat> because of exposure, which means Somebody can be filming it and show it around the world. Because of exposure, the devil hasn't had a chance to go in and erase the images and change some things. All right? You, if you know your history, you'll know a lot about it. Now, now, this is not a racist statement. America has more lies being taught about its history than any other country in the world. Amen. America, where we live, right here. Our history is so perverted. If all you know is what they taught you, you don't know much about the truth. Amen. So they got images and things going on uh, that, that they're looking at and it's becoming eye-opening that this ain't, this ain't a white man's religion. This ain't a white man's religion. And, and whatever the devil is doing to separate us from God, uh, black, white, green, you know, I said something to a Caucasian uh, associate of mine. I said, I understand that you don't want to kill me and my people. I understand that. You don't want to lynch us, shoot us. But do you think you're better than me because of the color of your skin? And he stopped for two or three seconds. I said, you already answered the question. <laughs> you already answered the question. See, here's the thing. You may not want to kill me, and you think that's God. But until you confront the truth about who I am, right, right. when God moves in, truth is always welcome. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Wherever truth is not welcome, God is not there. That's right. Amen. America, me, let me, come on now. So, so we got to get to the place that we embrace truth and we're going to fight a spiritual fight. It's a spiritual fight. That the devil is trying to keep the people of God depressed and oppressed. Now I'm not talking racism. I'm talking about who the people of God is. Do you know that, that it is proven? And the only reason you don't know is because it ain't on CNN. Most of y'all don't, don't study nothing. You don't read, you don't read nothing. You know a person that either you in school or you reading. You know who, who oh my God, what, who said that? Oh, famous person, y'all might know the quote. He said, I never allowed my education to interfere with my work. Y'all heard that quote? Wow, God, I can't think of who said it. But, but this is what you gotta understand. It, you gotta keep reading and learning. Keep reading and learning. Keep reading and learning. It's proven who Jesus was. Proven. Who he was, where he come from. And for whatever reason, that lie, myths, have come to distort that. There are passages in the Bible, if you take time to study, whenever it mentions an angel, and it gives any description about the angel, try to research it, try to study it. You'll be amazed what you find. So now, I didn't tell you what it was. You're going to research it yourself. Amen. If we don't start getting to a spiritual fight, the devil going to keep winning, because we're trying to use natural tools. 
you know, um, I told y'all this before, I got into a, not really a confrontation because they're not important enough for me to have a confrontation with. Um, you know, people people don't like what I say when I say good singing has nothing to do with worship. That don't, that only affect, that only bother people that think they can sing and call themselves a worship. Come on now. Are you listening? Good singing has nothing to do with worship. And what happens now is people that can sing and call themselves a worshiper feel like I'm attacking them. But how is that attack on you if you're a real worshiper? Right. Amen. All right? If we don't start coming telling the truth in God's house, we're going to keep losing. Which means we may have a million people in the house with no manifestation of God's word. All right? If we don't get back to the supernatural, all we are is just another movement, another religion. We need the power of God working through you. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. It got to manifest in your life. Let me let me let me let me get to some more. So everything in your home that you're trying to produce God's glory in is a spiritual fight. It's a spiritual fight. A husband is not going to change how he's acting in the house because it is affecting the children. You know, you say, well, what about your children? It seems like you think if you bring up the children, it'll change his behavior. But that's the devil in that house. And you can't try to use a natural tool to fix a spiritual problem. Right. Amen. Amen. You understand that? Amen. Amen. So, therefore, i got to get to the place that I know how to get this thing to produce. i gotta, I got to know how to get the Word of God to manifest in my life. Let's read a couple of past scriptures we read uh, uh, last week. Proverbs 4, verse 1 through 5. Um, because understanding, when I, when I study the Word understanding, and I'm studying the Word understanding, there's three components to it. Your understanding... Discernment and an obedient heart is all one and the same. They're synonyms. If you have understanding, you know how to discern. If you have understanding, you have an obedient heart. Now, you can't take one of those out and still have understanding. True. All right? When you understand, you do have the ability to discern. Then there's one passage in, in, in Proverbs 5 we're going to read that really you, you need to see this. You got Your eyes got to be open to this. Because it changed how you uh, attack a problem in your life. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding. Pay attention to your father so that you can get understanding. Do you get that? Yes. This is why you need to understand the devil attack fathers in homes. Amen. Amen. This is why, now I know you, you may not like this, but uh, you know we, we, the, the video spread real good. That video we was spreading through our Facebook with the, you know, the man was doing a race and um, so the math is posted, I, I posted this morning, and it, it said, you know, if you were, if this is the race, and you know, you're gonna win a prize, and if you if you were, if your parents are still married, you get an extra two steps in the race. And if you didn't, you know, certain things, and the more that you didn't have to deal with, the more steps you got, until some people were all at the front of the line of the race, because of what they had to go through, right? Well, it was that was that was sparked off a study that there are things that the devil can do that will mess up a person's future. Because now, hear hear hear, hear me good. When you come from a lazy background, a welfare mentality, you don't you don't even have I'm going to win mindset. Right. So the more obstacles that are in your way, because all that testing. They studied the test from a natural perspective. I studied it from a spiritual perspective. Amen. God had me studying this thing, which the research they've done, and he said, the Holy Spirit said, now all you got to do is just show them the obstacle and how to get around it or over it. Amen. 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 You don't celebrate, you don't worship the obstacle. So if you're not, if, you're, if you were raised in a home where your parents were uh, didn't stay married, it affects you. Even to this day, if you try to Google and research the effects of a divorce on a child, it's still mind-boggling. They, they sit there, they're like, oh, no, no. we won't know until they show up. No, I, I didn't know. You really need to study that. So to be, to be brought up where two parents is not in the home, it are, that's another barrier you have to overcome. Now, check this out. There's a difference between a father in your home and a father in your life. Because your biological father may not be your father. Alright? And if, if a child is brought up without a father in their life, I didn't say a father at home, in their life, helping to navigate, helping to instruct, teach, alright? If a child, that's another obstacle they have to overcome. 
You understand me? And it's more effect, it has a stronger effect on a male child than it will a female child not to have a father. True. That most of the time the devil will slip in, you will grow up with no father, and he'll say, it ain't nothing. It is something. Because if I haven't dealt with what was put in my mind or my heart by you, Mr. Devil, because I didn't have a father, I'm always going to be hindered from reaching my full potential. So when you when you discover what could be obstacles, you don't bow down and worship the obstacles. You learn how to overcome them. So if I didn't have a father, what was missing? Right? Because if my mother was spiritual, I came up with the right balance. Amen. Did you catch that? Yes. All right? And I need to know because here's the thing. Here's the thing. God give me everything I need to be a success. Right. So even if I am a single parent, Come on. If, if the mother ain't there or the father ain't there, even God give me what I need. Right. Right. And, and my child need to be able to look back over their life mm -hmm. and say, you know, I didn't have a male figure, but I sure had a father. Come on now. Are you listening to me? Come on. So, so you, you got to get there play. When, when he starts talking about a father, you need a father in your life. That's why you see the devil um, got these men out here um, making babies and not taking care of them. And women, it don't even bother them that a man will have children that he's not taking care of. Come on now. And still be attracted to them. You, you get me? That's all, the, that's all the devil's plan. Because if you're attracted to that, you don't mind being a victim of that. Any real woman step back and say, now wait a minute. If you if you are a responsibility dodger, mm -hmm. you ain't for me. Right. I don't care what color your eyes is. Right. I don't care what kind of car you get. Come on. Ultimately, he starts to affect the honor that's due to a father. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Yeah. Women, you need to be careful that you don't ever try to walk in a man's shoes that's in the house yes. and in the children's life. Yes. That's the devil rising up in you, mm -hmm. trying to walk in a position. To make the real man walk out. You know, I, 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 you, I read a lot. I read a whole lot. I read more, this is God's honest truth. I read more now in a month than I read my whole 12 years in elementary, junior high, and high school. That's the God's honest truth. I'm reading this thing about marriage, right? Because even though I got the Holy Spirit, I still got to seek out knowledge. Do y'all want to know one of the, and this is what's so mind boggling. They don't have this as the number one, but research say it is one of the most, the top reasons a man will leave or cheat on his wife. You know what it is? When the wife rob him of his honor in the house. Oh, you don't believe that? I know you don't. I, what that got to do with it? The moment you run your mouth like he's a pump to him, you send him away. They listen. It's proven. We're not talking about a real man. Mm -hmm. Not that thing that humped you with no job. I'm talking about a real man. Right, right. Real men are not attracted to an abusive woman that will try to rob me of who I am. Right. And if I got to give up my manhood to be your husband, I want to be your husband. They won't talk about that. Your mouth and your stankness the devil put in you is to destroy a man. Come on now. And you notice the devil when he calls me. Good God all day. A man is more prone to cheat on his wife when the wife attacks his manhood, talks to him like he's a kid, become verbally abusive, saying things, calling him out in his name. But that don't, that don't make it right. We're not talking about right. We're just talking about the facts right now. Why would he do that? Because he's going to go restore his manhood mm -hmm. that she tried to take away. Right. And you know they don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. And he's wise, you blah, 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 blah. Don't let me leave that long with you. Get back on something. So I got to seek out understanding. I can't try to run. I, you know, that, that's some good stuff right there. Yes, it is. I can't try when I when there's a father in the house, a man in the house, I got to know my place. The devil can't live in me. I don't work on that. That's right. I don't work on that. Every time I open my mouth the wrong way, that's me going to the bathroom trying to pee standing up. I'm not the man here. Right. Mm -hmm. 
This is awkward and uncomfortable. I'm not designed to hold this position. Are you listening to me? That devil always creeping here to have this way. Ye children, hear ye children the instructions of a father and intend to no understanding. Come on. Verse number two. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Come on. For I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Come on. He taught, he taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my word, keep my commandments, and live. Last one, verse number five here. Get wisdom, get understanding. They're not the same. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. That's when you meditate. That's when you ponder. That's when you're getting fixated on the word of God and you won't let that thing go because you know that word got something in it for me. Let me tell you something. Excuse me. Let me tell you why I read so much. Because when I read and I don't understand, I put a bookmark up there and I'll go off and go a whole week studying one word Amen. and come back to that thing. Amen. 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 I'm constantly reading, constantly reading. And, 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 and you have to understand, when I'm reading God's word, things jump out at me. I don't read God's word to say I read five, 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 five chapters a day. Yes. I, you know, I, it's now this is me. It's impossible for me to read five chapters of God's Bible. I can't do it. Because there's something I'm about to get stuck on. You're looking at a man that took five years to read the book of Proverbs. Amen. I read it. I'm telling you, and, and, and Eli, I'm not slow. <laughs> you understand? I mean, it ain't nothing for me to put that book down and research something for days to meditate on it, to research it, to, to get a different perspective. That, like the word understanding. Just try to Google the word understanding. And you, some, then listen to me. When I first pull up the word start my research, man, I pull up this stuff. I'm like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. I thought this would be cut and dry. But the Holy Ghost would give me things and say, you should research this. You need to look at this. When it comes to understanding, now, let's go to verse number five, because I want to bring something out. Verse number five here. Verse number five and one, I'm sorry. Chapter five, I'm sorry. Proverbs five and one. I'm going to show you this. Because we talked about getting it from God's perspective. How does God see it? All right? You can have wisdom, but you won't be able to see it how God sees it. That's what I'm going to check. All right? My son, Attend unto my wisdom and bow thy ear. Meaning, pay attention. You know, have you ever have you ever really got to the point where, like, it's not like it really affects what you hear, but it, it grabs you till you, you sit up. Come on, you're gonna eat it. Really, is that really gonna make a big difference? But it's something about me revealing I want it. I actually get it. So he said, I want you to bow my ear to my understanding. Come on, verse number two. This is what's powerful. That thou mayest regard discretion, and thy lips may keep knowledge. No, that's not what I want. Um, is that, let me see. That's not the passage I want. I want the, oh, I just read it last week. Let me get in my Bible. That's not the passage I want. I want the passage that's, that, that revealed that we're to see it like God sees it. Maybe it is five. <coughs> Anybody got the scriptures I, I, I read from last week? Is it over okay? here? Okay, that is the King James, right? Hold on 
going to say? Y'all going to tell y'all got nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You came here to hear me, didn't you? Mm -hmm. You just sit right there and hear what I got to say then. Mm -hmm. Alright, let me let me get to this here. Because y'all ain't got nothing. Y'all ain't cooking or nothing. Alright, alright. Let's see what we got here. Alright, 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 alright. Okay, first of all, first of all, this is that's what that's what it is. I was going to get the right translation that I had. Uh, oh God, that don't seem like the right translation. Or we going to do? We, we, listen. I'm going to stop because I'm tempted to go and say, all right, let's just play last week's sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 3, let me see. Oh, no, no. no, that ain't it. All right, so we, 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 we got to find that. So when God starts talking about understanding, he starts getting us to the place that he wants us not just to have understanding, but to see it his way. It's through relationship that we, we grow in understanding, all right? So if I'm going to get understanding, the more I hang out with God, the more I get to see things how he sees it. When I walk in wisdom, this is what happens. i got to listen to a few minutes. When I walk in wisdom, you can walk in wisdom by simply following instructions. True. Stay quiet. True. True. And you obey, oh, yes. you stay quiet, you'd be surprised at the wisdom that, that's in there. Tell them that they should do this. And you tell it, and that's wisdom. But to understand is to know why. For instance, you have this cup, right? Let's say we have this cup. And, and inside this cup, well, let's just say this is a tunnel. And, and, and this is you. And you're in there. And then wisdom say, get out of there. So you get out. Right? Now, I did it. And I obeyed. And then God gave me understanding. Why did I have to get out? Because you was in there. And it was about to fill that up with water. And put a lid on it. And you was going to die. So you see the difference? Mm -hmm. So now understanding is taking me. Wisdom just requires obedience. Right. Understanding requires spending time with God. Right. Right. You understand? Yeah. Sometimes you have. See, this is what most people have. A, a, a weak prayer life. Because they don't understand why they're going through what they're going through. You're in something because of things you've done. Sure. And until you hang out with God and God says, see, well, see, that's well, you shouldn't have never even been dating him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he made me laugh. But, well, you, you, comedy is not the root of all love, okay? So you, know, so you start seeing, okay, so the problem is not him or me. Uh, the problem is simply I'm making bad decisions when it comes to what's a good man. He said, you see that baby? He said, yeah, where's his daddy? Mm -hmm. See that baby? Where's his daddy? Mm -hmm. See that baby? Where's his daddy? Mm -hmm. Okay, now you want me to help you. We got to stop having babies with our husbands. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, people want the real Holy Ghost because the real Holy Ghost is going to tell you the truth about you. Right. Yeah, that's true. So now you, want, you, you want some things, but you, you don't qualify. Now, I, I tell you tell all the time. You can't allow the devil to distract you. And while you out home, God send your husband. That's true. Because mm -hmm. it will pass you by. Yes. When you spend time messing with somebody that you know is not sent by God, when it's your time, you all you, you blew it. Amen. Amen. No, no, no. When I stop humping him, God sent him back. Okay, you keep thinking that. It don't work like that. Oh, we get off that. So you look like you got somebody that all right, let me just get off that right quick. How do I get understanding? The moment I know understanding is the thing that's going to help propel me to another level. Keep in mind, when I understand something, I know how to make that thing work according to the original purpose it was made. Right. So when I get the word of God and I get understanding, whatever the word of God is supposed to produce, I know how to make it produce. Well, if I'm coming up short, if I get understanding, I'll make it manifest. So how do I get understanding? Go to 1 Kings 3 and 9. 1 Kings 3 and 9. If I want understanding, where do I get it from? Where do I get understanding? Because without understanding, 
I'm now at his mercy. I, I need a miracle. When you need a miracle, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you need a miracle, you put yourself in a position that you don't know how to get yourself out of. Or the devil did something, you don't know how to win. That's why you need a miracle. Come on. Really, let's just think about it. Do you need a miracle to tie your shoe? If you know how to tie your shoe. Do you, need, do you need a miracle to pay your cell phone bill if you got money in the bank? No. What do you need a miracle? You don't need a miracle when you don't have what you need to make something happen. Right. So the more I grow in God, I become a miracle. Mm -hmm. Going somewhere Amen. to produce God's glory. Amen. 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 You know, miracles don't come because you beg a lot. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Miracles come. I mean, now, now listen to me. As God wrong. He it, and then you can, there's no scripture to say, do this, do this, do this, and we're gonna get a miracle. It's just whenever if God, and he may not want to. Just because you need something don't mean God got to get it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let's just tell the truth about God, and then we can grow. Oh, first, first Kings 3 and 9. Give thou thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Now I don't just want to know what to do. I need to know why I need to do it that way. <laughs> Do you know when you start working with people and trying to elevate people, you need understanding. Yes. That's true. Do you, listen to me. Do you know how challenging it is to try to elevate a fool? Because mm -hmm. what happens when you go to teach a fool something? The Bible said you'll offend them. Yeah. They'll be upset. They'll be angry. So what did the Bible said? When you find a fool, leave him right alone. Right. <laughs> right? Well, what's a fool? A fool hates knowledge. Mm -hmm. Why do you hate knowledge? Because you know more than me. I'm already offended. That means I can't even grow. Right. When you walk into the school and the professor says, okay, I know more than you, the moment you get offended, you can't grow. How do you know you know my own you tell me? No, no, keep your keep your neck still, baby. Because if you're gonna grow, you got to be submitted. Amen. Are you listening to me? Alright? You need understanding. Why do I need understanding? Because it'll frustrate you, aggravate you when you go to teach your children. Y'all, oh, y'all ain't had no children mm -hmm. that think they know more than you? <laughs> well, you don't even know what you're talking about. He's a good man. Right. I'm telling you, he ain't no good. You know, the most I'm telling you something, but the most folks are mm-mm, mm-mm. It's a dead cat. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> but it's a dead cat on the line. Chad, you say, I don't tell me nothing about no dead cats. <laughs> no, don't listen to me. When, if you don't have understanding, on how to relate to somebody that think they know more than you, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to be a frustrated parent. You're going to be like, ah, I'm just crazy. But I'm not going to deal with her. <laughs> what are you going to do with you? <laughs> All right? Give thou thy servant understanding heart to, to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Now, this, this is something you have to understand. If you don't have a heart, to help others, you can forget about it. True. Understanding is not when a tree bears fruit, which Jesus in St. John chapter number 15, he wants us to be fruitful. When a tree bears fruit, it ain't to benefit the tree. Right. It's to benefit others right. that's in contact with the tree. Right. Right. Y'all look like you're upset. That's true. Right. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. Go to Psalm 119 and 34. Psalm 119, 34. I give wisdom. I'm now, I'm in a position to help other people. Because I, when I got understanding, I'm sorry, not with, when I got understanding, I can not only, I not only can explain it, I can teach it and get others to get the same thing I got. Right. Yesterday we met with the, the youth. The last two youth sessions we had were very powerful. And I, I mean, really one. But yesterday we dealt with money. If you broke, you can't teach nobody else how to get money. True. That's true. No, and that's just a fact. And you know what? This is just the truth. Now, down in this church, I know y'all, y'all, y'all do it. Most parents spend zero time teaching their children about money. They know nothing. They just grow up, hope to get a good job, and buy a car. Let me tell you something. There are things that you learn about money. You can improve your own life. You ain't got to pray. Right. I was giving them some statistics yesterday um, in the low-income areas. Uh, I think that's what I was trying to say at the table. I don't know. 
the low income areas, do you know, what was it, 50, over 50% 50 of people in low income areas will pay the same percentage of the income for their car for their transportation that they will for their house. That's a poverty mindset, you'll never have nothing. Some of y'all looking at your car paper, then what the? <laughs> no, that's a poverty mindset. You're so caught up in the looking good for people, mm -hmm. you won't do what's required to be something. You'd rather look like you got something right. than really have something. Right. <laughs> um, the, that low, that's the low income areas. Then they had 40% of people, no, what, the average, oh man, I'm getting all confused now. I gotta get my, no, I got my paper. I had my paper. I had my paper. When I pull that paper, take a peek. I start talking like I was smart. Then, forty percent of people. No, I think the average person spends forty percent of their income in transportation. Forty percent. That's a poverty money. When forty percent of your money is going to impress somebody else, you'll never be nothing. I know you're doing the math now. You say, I get, I get a thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, oh. There are things you need to understand. There's things that they've done in this world to condition you to spend. If you can't get out of that rat's race, you're going to lose. You got to teach that to your kids. You got to teach that to your kids. I have, a, I have a credit card. I use credit cards. Credit cards are going to me. I got a credit card that uh, I use. And um, I spent last week alone. I spent about seventeen hundred dollars in just diesel. I spent about five hundred dollars in tolls, right? And um, that's weekly now. And and all that comes from to go to the credit card, but not all of it, because some of it you know different things. But most of it go through the credit card. And and one, the day is charged, the day gets paid. The day is charged. Because they give me points. And they're going to give me some, some food money. And they're going to give me some shoe money. Or whatever else I want. And I just charge it. The moment you start using credit cards and they ain't got nothing to pay in the bank right then, you're already in the rest race. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of that. Before I talk to God about increasing me, I got to start trying to act like I got something I don't. Right. Right. You know, the reason credit cards was designed was for convenience. Rich people had credit cards, and they had credit cards because they couldn't walk around with the cash. So they had credit cards that would say, this person is good for this amount of money, and they would pay them at the end of the month. And then they said, wait a minute, if we find some slow people that want to look like they got it, and really ain't got it, we can get rich off of them. See, let me see this, and I'm going to finish my, my, my scriptures here. We can put the banking industry in the ground if we do two things. Don't be late again on another payment and don't bounce another check. They thrive off insufficiency among the poor. Rich people ain't got their problem. I had a, um, oh yeah, we had a credit card, right? We paid before. Well, matter of fact, I think it was the church credit card. And uh, it was like $300 on there or something like that. I don't know what it was. And somehow I thought it was on. I thought it was on automatic pay because what all my credit cards are automatic pay just in case I forget. But normally what I do is once we charge something, you know, I immediately will uh, pay it. Well, somehow I forgot. They called me and they said, Mr. Hatcher, we know that you overlooked it, and we wanted to see how you wanted to work this out. And we've already put in. I know. And I called. I said, well, What about this late fee, Mr. Hatcher? Don't even worry about that. Don't even worry about that. We already took care of that because now. You ain't getting no waiver every other month. Right, 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 right. right. Now you ain't get that $39 on it. You're lucky you got the interest. Because you don't normally get the interest. Mm -hmm. You better take that little $3 interest and go in there in the boardroom and celebrate, and you give me back my $39. Mm -hmm. If you start learning about money, you can change your own financial destiny with no prayer. That's true. Amen. And you ain't got to send a TV evangelist fifty dollars. Ah, yes, for y'all. You have that. Uh, let, let me read it again. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Give me understanding, and I'll keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Now look at this. 
Give me understanding. What you, how you want me to live will become my lifestyle. See, you, you don't get understanding to benefit your flesh. You get understanding to benefit the kingdom. Right. Lord G, that was good. Right. That, was, that was good right there. That was good right there. Do you know, uh, you know, now I don't want to, you know, this is, this is so awesome. Um, we have people that listen to us literally around the world. Um, we have a spiritual daughter, Felicia, in Nigeria. And uh, we say congratulations to her. She's getting married. And, um, and we, we, got, we have um, people in Kenya. And, um, and they, they, most of them live where there's no signal. So they have to go into certain parts of town and stuff to get a signal and listen to the sermons and all sorts of stuff. And, and you, you look at my messages and all of the things that we discuss with them. And uh, they love this word. Amen. They love the word. There are people getting manifestation because of this word, and they thousands of miles away. How are you not getting manifestation? Amen. Sitting right here. Come on. Young lady, she reached out to me. She heard one of our, one of our sermons, and she reached out, and uh, she, she gave me her history about how she was rejected by the community. And... Um, and how, you know, this is her life now. And blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So we just, I had to stop. We don't even talk about that no more. Let's start talking about the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. When you understand why God made you, when you understand that, right. things are going to change. Things okay. change. Let me tell you something. You need to seek out understanding to glorify God, yes. not because you want something. Mm -hmm. Told her, why don't you stop trying to get for you? Just start living for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's all, you've already accepted. That this is your life now because of what was done to you. Right. Her father sold her to a witch. And um, he wanted something. So to which her life is over. So he, she was thrown out of the village. Her mother left with her. And her and her mother has been living in isolation all these years. Right? And, um, and she began to tell me all the, you know, what goes with that life. <coughs> well, <clears throat> the moment she accept, okay, well, I ain't got nothing to lose anyway. I ain't going to get no man because, you know, they say I'm, I'm foolish or whatever. I ain't going to have no children because now she's cursed. Her whole life is cursed. Well, then why not just go down to do everything for the Lord? Forget about what you want. Right. Just keep focus on God then. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just focus on God. Whatever you, you accepted it, right? Ain't that, that, what, that what the village say? The village say. Well, go on then. Then do it for God. Good. Good. I'm going to do it for God. What happened six, seven months later? She got, well, in Africa, they call their pastors, daddy, uncle, um, things like that. She sends me a message. Daddy, thank you. She says, I'm getting married. Like, I could feel her excitement reading this thing on message. She said, you don't know what? She said, God, I didn't even ask for it, she said. It just came to me. Let me tell you something. It don't matter what people think about you. When you start living for God, God start moving in your favor. No doubt people, you know the Bible said the devil's a persecutor of the brother. You know somebody up in that man's face talking about something. You know she sold a witch. She's a witch baby. You know that. He said, I want that witch baby. Give me that witch baby. Give me the voodoo that come with that. The bone, the chicken blood. Give it all. Come on now. It don't matter, it don't matter what the devil did to you in birth. The moment you start shifting your life for his glory, stuff starts changing for you. I said, well, you know, my, you know, they, uh, you know, these 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 children are you know born with defects because of stuff that their parents did. Nobody care nothing about that. That's right. Nobody care nothing about what your mama did. That's right. Nobody care nothing about what your mama and your daddy smoked. I don't care nothing about that. I don't need that in the Bible. I live by the Bible. I never, I never be able to do this because of the doctor did it. Live for God. Live for God and watch what happened to you. Live for God see when he turned your life around. If you get to the place that you live for God and, and, and God it can get you to just walk in his glory. You things are happening for you. you it don't even affect you because you focused on God. 
man, I got some stuff going on right now in my life. And the devil said, we need to think about this. This is more than prayer. And the Holy Spirit said, we ain't got to think about that. You need, you need to focus on what we need, what need to take place today. Because you know what? If the devil can distract you, he'll win. Can you imagine it being in the boxing ring, fighting, and you looking at the crowd? What would you say? You said, hit him with an uppercut. Now when you wake up, <laughs> and you mad at them. Why are you telling me what to do? Why are you not paying attention to the fight? <laughs> I believe God's going to do something supernatural in your life. Amen. You got to get hungry for the kingdom's glory. Amen. I'm telling you, you get hungry for the kingdom's glory, he'll change your car, and that car ain't going to mean nothing to you. <laughs> no, I mean, come on, let's just think about it. Some people you can look at and be like, that's not their flavor. Like, I don't, I just don't see bro Frank with a pimped out ride. Like, you know, the brims and all. Like, he just seemed like a regular guy. I just don't, you know, he's just like, I don't, you know, just regular, you know. Happy go lucky, young man. Then all of a sudden, he comes in with, a, with this truck. He'd be like, what the heck? He said, well, I just, it just came like that. I just, I went to go trade the truck in. They had it. And that, and everybody else be around the truck and be like, look at this truck. He be like, it's just a truck. See, that's how God bless you. Right. Stuff that don't mean nothing to you. Right. But the world be celebrating. Right. Woo -hoo. Man, I can't believe you got that. You said, well, it's just, it's, just, right. it's just a car. It's just a car. Yeah, but look, them the suicide doors on it. Mm. And you be talking about complaining about it. Yeah, I've been meaning to get that fixed. No, you don't fix that, man. Keep <laughs> on going. The Bible saying what the world is seeking after, he'll give it to you. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things the world is seeking after, I'll give it to you. Can you imagine you just want to go somewhere and you get on your private jet? And it don't mean that you people say, you got a jet? I got a jet. You got a car, right? Well, your car take you where you want to go. My jet take me where I want to go. The only reason you don't think about jet because it's on a level you ain't used to thinking. Yeah, see, y'all can accept the car. Y'all can't accept no jet. Jet is a waste of money. Car waste of money too for some of y'all. But you still got it though. True. Yeah, you can find a bus somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's a bus to get you where you need to go. Right. Yeah, but why you don't take the bus? Oh, yeah, that's all wasting a lot of time. A lot of time you waste the airport. See, the, if you allow God to elevate you, He changed even your mentality. Let me leave that alone, because some of y'all look like I'm about to raise an offer for a jet. Now, that's what we want to do. I just want you to open your mind up just to live for God. God, I'm not, I'm not concerned about stuff. I just want to live for you. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your people that's listening to this broadcast, listening to this message around the world. We ask God that you would meet them right where they are, that your glory will shine, that in spite of what the devil has forecast, you will be a God that will surpass our understanding and will give us your understanding. And we'll give you praise and glory all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.